Hi, this is Tracy with DIY or Bust. Today's project is pouring the concrete tubes that I'm using to put up underneath the cabin to uh, replace the footers that really didn't exist. They were tree stumps, it was pieces of wood just set on the ground. There was really no true um, support underneath the cabin. So I'm going to pour uh, eight footers for the outside and then five footers on the inside of the cabin. Today's pour is the eight outside footers. One is done, I wanna show you what my process is in case this is helpful for you. Okay, so here are some holes. Here's a hole basic. So you wanna get that hole wall as straight down as possible, okay? Cut out any tree roots. And then I have this jig right here that I made. 24 inches deep. So I just stick this in the hole and when it hits the bottom and touches the ground in the center, I know the hole is deep enough. So I am almost there. And then also check your fit with your tube to make sure your hole is round enough and straight enough down. So see, even though the center is deep enough, the sides might not be. So I've got some good clearance, barely enough clearance. And then I'm gonna use a plumb bob to make sure that the point that I'm hanging, the um, post is gonna go to, does end up in the center. And I think I'm looking good so far. I've got all my string lines set up, which was a bit of a trick running it through the cribbing, but I lucked out with the placement. Got them all level. So I've got the string lines are level. I have little, um, Levelers that go on, they're called line levels, I think. They go on the string, so you can get the string level and then you can get the tubes up to the same level as the string. So I dug the holes two feet plus a few inches deep. I've got um, a bag uh, of the pea gravel in the bottom. This is a quick crete pea gravel. I'm sure you can use anything appropriate, but this is what I'm using. And then the first one that I did I ended up using four bags of 54, 50 pound quick crete bags. And this is the first one that I did. So inside here are four pieces of rebar and my J bar. <clears throat> now the rebar, you do not want it sticking down into the gravel. So here's, here's a rebar cut to 22 inches. You, this is what you do not want to do. You don't want to stick that in there and then pour your concrete. Because what happens is water will come up through that gravel and it will rust the rebar. So you need to make sure you pour some concrete first and then you set this in the concrete, but not so that it is down into the gravel. Okay, that's very important. I only could cut three pieces of rebar before <laughs> my sawzall gave out on me. So I decided to bend the pieces going forward. And this is one that's bent. I actually like this approach better because it gets it a little bit deeper into the inside. So I'm gonna do two down, two up, and then my J, my J bolt in the middle. I also went and I backfilled, let me come over to the other hole. I backfilled all the way around the holes and leveled. So here, this has been backfilled. What I did while I backfilled it is I made sure it was level both ways and I very gently backfilled it. That's providing enough support for me to pour the concrete in without having to do forms. I was looking for a way to do this without having to build and screw pieces of wood like this in a frame all the way around just to provide some stability. So for this one, this is my last one that I need to level. You can see that is nice and centered that way. Nice and centered this way. So I'm just gonna carefully backfill the dirt that I've got right here from when I dug the hole and put it around. Here's the first completed post. Uh, not post, well, you know what I mean, the pillar. <laughs> Here's the first one. And see how the threads are um, sticking up? Uh, three or four threads worth. And that's great because I've got my hardware over here. This is what I'm gonna be putting on the bolt. And this guy, this is for a four by four. This provides some space here. 
So it goes on just like that. And it needs to, those threads need to stick up enough for that nut to grab it, but not too high. This is a little shallow. I could have gone taller and I probably will on the next one. I'm gonna measure this. I think it's a half an inch. And then I'm gonna tape my J bars, J bolts, whatever they're called, those things. I wanna make sure that when it's inserted into the concrete, the threaded end does not extend too high. Otherwise, it's gonna cause a problem when I go to put my hardware and my wood post on there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I am gonna measure the depth. I'm trying to do this one handed, not very easy. Measure that. Okay, it looks like one inch, right? One inch. So I need to, let's see what, what tape is this? This is inch and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna measure one inch down on each one of these and I'm gonna tape it off. And that half inch is gonna cover the top of it so I can protect it from the concrete. Last thing I want is for the concrete to get into those threads then I won't be able to screw the bolt on there. This is how I'm doing it. I'm just measuring one inch so I know where to put the tape. Forgive me, I'm doing this one-handed. So that's covering one inch. I can just roll that up, rip it. Twist it. That is my J-bolt with a protected end. Now, when I set this into the concrete, I know how far to push it in, no more than the bottom of this. And that gives me plenty of protected threads for the hardware attachment. I used a six inch auger to break up the dirt, help me dig those holes a little quicker. This is my friend and I, pouring concrete underneath. So we used two to three buckets to put two 50 pound bags of concrete in. It made it much easier to bring those underneath the cabin and pour into the tubes. I wish I had some video of me actually pouring it, but we were working fast because quickcrete is quick.